Will Los Angeles regain its old glory? Or will Seattle return to its second straight Legends Cup? It's the Western Conference Championship next. I just want to be given the chance. You were the pioneers that built women's football. The opportunity to succeed. Or even to fail. You are the league of their own. Figure out what the f you need to do mentally to be able to sacrifice everything for the girl next to you. You better knock the f shit out of her. Put the hurt on them first. Keep them on the ground. Stick your foot on their throat. A Western Conference Championship edition of LFL Football Night has arrived to the Windy City. Welcome inside the booth of LFL Football Night, Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. And yes, we've got the Western Conference Championship for you, the Seattle Mist and the Los Angeles Temptation. 16 weeks of the regular season behind us. It's time to hide the women and children. It's playoff time, Bobby Huco. Heck yeah. The only difference being the women determine who move on to Legends Cup 2017 tonight. So look, let's look at this game a little closer, Bobby Huco. On paper, what stands out the most? Are you kidding me? The offensive firepower for both teams. For Seattle, it's led by their captain, head coach Chris Michelson. He's also the offensive coordinator. They're ranked number one in the league right now. Now, if he's the captain, the second in command has to be quarterback KK Matheny. She knows his offense inside and out, and she is the leader in the locker room. Behind her, perhaps the best pair of running backs in the LFL, fullback Stevie the Bull Schnorr. She's a nominee for Offensive Player of the Year, and opposite her, Dominique Malloy, the most dangerous and fastest player in the league. If that's not enough, outside a wide receiver, Jade Randall, last year's MVP. The chemistry right now between Randall and KK Matheny, not that great, but that could change tonight. It'll be interesting to see if Randall and Matheny are able to get on the same page here in the postseason. Now let's switch to Los Angeles. And when you talk about LA's offense, you got to talk about number eight, Ashley Salerno. Now Salerno's not having a great passing season. But on the ground, she is the number two rusher for this Los Angeles roster. We did talk to Jeff Loudon, their offensive coordinator, earlier in the week. And what did he say to both of us? He said they've got to be more balanced, namely open up the passing attack. It's going to be interesting if they can do that tonight with Cynthia Schmidt, their number one receiver, a tall target. Maybe out of this game, we're receiving late word due to an injury she sustained earlier in the season. If that's the case, they've got to look to Delaney Hall, their number two receiver. A shorter stature, but can stretch the field. Good, solid hands. So that's the offensive case on both sides of the ball. If you had to pick a winner this early, who would that be? Right now, I'd have to take Seattle because of the injuries to Los Angeles. Their players are back. They're all playing tonight, but they lack that quality snaps that they need coming into a championship game like tonight. Right now, I have to say Seattle. Seattle is a four and a half point favorite, but enough hype. It's time to lace them up. It's the Western Conference Championship. Say it with me. Kickoff is next. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco on the call. The Western Conference Championship. One of the top rivalries in the LFL. This one promises to be a good one. A nice deep high kick. That'll sail out of bounds by Lily Granston. We'll get our first look at the number one ranked offense in the league, the Seattle Mist, and specifically their five foot three quarterback, KK Matheny. We sat down to talk to her head coach, Chris Michelson. The quarterback situation in Seattle is, is pretty simple. KK Matheny is the starting quarterback. So and unless she was, uh, would in, endure an injury of some sort or just struggle so horrendously that I had to make a change, we're going to run with KK throughout the entire playoff game. KK Matheny is a championship quarterback. You see her stats right there. They're solid. 27 out of 46, 11 touchdowns, and zero, yes, zero interceptions. That's what made her a great quarterback. She doesn't give it away. A first and 10. We've got an early penalty indication false start on the Seattle miss, that is head referee Tom Hug. Prior to the snap, ball start, number 12, Seattle. Five yard penalty, still first down. God 
Damn it! You don't expect that early in the game from Seattle. Here's a team that won the championship two years ago. They are fired up with the first play of the game, a mental mistake. That'll back him up five yards. That's Dominique Malloy in motion. Fakes it to Malloy, finding Schnorr in the flat. A good-looking early completion. That'll be good enough for Seattle first down. Coach Michelson told me after studying tapes of Los Angeles, they react. When you throw a girl in motion like that, a jet sweep motion, they really jump. They fake that and the throw it to Snore underneath. Great call. Matheny remaining in the shotgun. A draw handoff to Schnorr and being tripped up at the line of scrimmage. You can see Schnorr not happy, but good-looking numbers here in 2017. Leading the league with an 8.9 per carry average. That is incredible. 8.9 and her running mate, Dominique Malloy, is over 12 yards a carry. What a backfield. KK Matheny now with an empty back set. Receivers flanked to the left and right side. Matheny looking over the middle, has a receiver. That is Dominique Malloy. A reception of six yards. Chelsea Hart on the tackle. Coach Michelson told me that's the weakness. The safeties play too deep. He's going to pick them apart and find holes underneath all night long. He's been over in the fucking goddamn. We don't got time for this shit. God damn it, you've got to watch that fucking play clock. That has been an ongoing concern with this offense from offensive coordinator Chris Michelson. He does not like the amount of time that KK Matheny takes in the huddle in getting the play set up. That was a look at Chelsea Hart, who went out of the game. A key corner for Los Angeles. They're going to need her back in the lineup. This is KK Matheny in the open field. That'll be a gain of seven yards, and it appears we do have a flag here. In the LFL, you can give yourself up as a quarterback. Looks like Lily Granston came in late here. Personal foul. Hitting the quarterback who was in their slide, number seven. Half the distance to the goal, first down. So the personal foul will tack on yardage as KK Matheny is guiding this offense. Let's meet the starters. Nicole Peterson, your center. Jessica Hopkins, wide receiver. Shay Norton, tight end. Jade Randall, tight end. Dominique Malloy, running back. Stevie Schnorr, running back. Hey, Matheny, quarterback. We talked about it in pregame, but the key tonight is the running backs, the thunder and lightning combination. Stevie Snore, the power back, and the speedster, Dominique Malloy. From the shotgun, a first and goal connecting with Shay Norton as Seattle draws first blood, up six to nothing. A quick release play. You could not ask for a better drive for Seattle to open this night off. A release play. Watch Norton. The rush comes hard. She just releases. Matheny sees it like a hot read. Boom. Bam. Touchdown Seattle. First drive. You said it. Five plays, 35 yards against that man's number three ranked defense. That's head coach Tui Soinoa also serving as the defensive coordinator for Los Angeles. That's as good a start as you would want if you're Seattle just exactly like the game plan was designed. You run the football with your two backs, and then you throw the ball underneath, and then you throw quick passes like that right down the field. A low snap that time from center Nicole Peterson. So the extra point, no good. Our score remains six to nothing. Jessica Hopkins, the veteran wide receiver. That was a good pass. Just catch the football and go in the end zone. Hit her back shoulder, and she just dropped it. Chris Michelson looking on in disgust at that extra point attempt as we meet L.A. starters. Delaney Hall, wide receiver. Sherry Awaga, tight end. Deanna Takarangi, tight end. Kiara Patterson, wide receiver. Megan Hansen, center. Carmen Borso, running back. Ashley Salerno, quarterback. The big question tonight is Kiara Patterson. Can she step in and play at the level that Cynthia Schmidt does at wide receiver? Carmen Borso, the league's number one running back, gaining two yards from the first play from scrimmage. With Schmidt out, I would think that offensive coordinator Jeff Loudon is going to be going to Borso all night long. A second and eight now. Ashley Salerno coming into this game knowing they need a more balanced offense. 
But Carmen Borso has brought him to this point. And they're going to go to her again. That is the F-150. A touchdown saving tackle by Jade Randall. But that'll be a gain of nine and a first down for Los Angeles. They brought the jet motion, then they came back inside with a trap to Borceau, and she is deadly inside the tackles. North to south, there's nobody that runs better than her. These are a pair of really strong offenses. We talked about Seattle being the number one ranked offense in the LFL, and Los Angeles just slightly behind them with the number three ranking. That's a handoff to Kiara Patterson. That'll be a three-yard gain. They're really going to the bench here with Patterson as we meet Seattle's defense. Kiera Williams, corner. Jessica Hopkins, corner. Michelle Angel, safety. Stevie Schnorr, safety. Danielle Hawkins, linebacker. Jade Randall, defensive end. Katie Whalen, defensive end. The key for that defense tonight is Stevie Schnorr. She's a safety, but she has to control Carmen Bourseau one-on-one to stop her from breaking big gainers. Another handoff to the F-150. That time for two yards, setting up a third and five. They know what got him here. That was the wheels of the F-150, Carmen Borso, and they're certainly giving her a lot of looks here early. On that Seattle defense, I guarantee you they're gonna have spying on her Jade Randall with incredible numbers. 18 tackles, 14 solo, one sack. She'll be all over Borso all night long. A high snap from Megan Hansen. Salerno does manage to recover, now chucks it down the field, and that is intercepted. Kiara Williams, the rookie, one of the rookies that has gotten a lot of playing time because they were matched up against weaker teams like Denver, and you could see here the rookie coming up big. Big mistake by the veteran, Ashley Salerno, reading her eyes. Kiera Williams, she's a great athlete, a, a mega soccer player. She came out with a great athletic move to give Seattle what they needed, the ball back. Great play by Williams, terrible play by Salerno. You expect much better decision making by a seven-year veteran quarterback like Ashley Salerno. You could see the 2017 numbers. The knock is the completion percentage, not even 40%. Yeah. Not very good. We know she can throw. She's had great years in the LFL, but this year her stats 13 out of 33 are not good at all. Great field position here for Seattle. A first down handoff to Malloy. Hanson and Granston on the tackle. In fact, we sat down with Hanson to talk about her move from Seattle to LA. For Seattle to say that they were um, had any ill will towards me or Lily leaving the Seattle Mist, I think it's retarded. Um, I left on good, good terms. I won a championship there. Very interesting. Great year. She's leading the league in tackling. 20 and a half tackles, one interception. I mean, he's all around great defensive player. But it's interesting. Coach Chris Michelson thinks she's a weakness, knows her weaknesses, which is over pursuing, and he's going after that tonight. Hansen doing an incredible job spelling Monique Gaxiola, and that time chasing down the bull, but not before Stevie Schnorr picks up another Seattle first down. The defensive ends of Los Angeles, they have to contain outside. You can't let Stevie Schnorr have a speed game outside, get the edge like that, or she'll kill you all night. And if Stevie Schnorr is beating you to the edge, you got problems. You got real problems, because the real problem is the fastest back in the league Dominique Malloy is going to do it all night long. Now you got Schnorr going outside. That was a look at Kia Ramos. Ramos formerly with the Las Vegas Sin, recently signed by Los Angeles, having some history playing under Tui Soinoa in Las Vegas. Just like in Major League Baseball, going to the playoffs, the best coaches bring in talent as they need it. A first and 10 play ball at the 15. Hand off to Malloy on a reverse, finding a lane and getting to the outside. A nice looking carry by number three. You talked about her speed. Did only manage two yards, but you saw a glimpse of that track-like speed getting to the edge. Even though that play only gained two yards, it's a great setup play. You bring the jet sweep action. You have to respect that speed and go after her outside. Now that will set up the play action pass. This Seattle offense really chewing up the game clock and doing a lot of that with the run game. The run game, the play action pass early in the game, the misdirection trying to confuse Megan Hansen. Right now, Chris Michaels' offense is working to perfection. 
already inside the 10 yard line of Los Angeles. A little heavy traffic in the backfield. Matheny did manage to hand off to Stevie Schnorr. A gain of nine yards, and that'll set up a first and goal. Hey, Coach Tui Suanoa from Los Angeles, his defensive game plan was all around Megan Hansen. She has to control the A gaps on both sides of the center, and right now she's not doing it. Stevie Schnorr, one of the more consistent running backs over the past three seasons, coming into this game with a very impressive 6.2 per carry average in her career. Now a first and goal, ball at the four, a toss right to the bull. And bulling her way into the end zone, touchdown Seattle. Wow, will beat skill any day of the week. She wanted that more than Los Angeles. That's all competition right there. They had her in the backfield. Watch this, she stopped right there. No help outside. She breaks two other tackles and bulls her way into the end zone. Wow, what a run by Stevie Schnorr. After we talked up Megan Hansen, Hansen whiffing on that open field tackle on Schnorr, as did Chelsea Hart. But not that's easier said than done, though. It's all about basic football. Who wants it more? Chelsea Hart's a great tackler, as is Hansen, and they didn't want it as much as Stevie Schnorr. A two-point attempt for this offense. We've got yet another penalty. This could be on Seattle once again. Looks to be a false start. Prior to the snap, false start, number 12. Five-yard penalty. There is no excuse for that. In a conference championship game, you can't have little mental mistakes like that. Unacceptable. That penalty on Danielle Hawkins, the left side tight end. Hawkins obviously new to this offense. That has been something that has plagued this offense to a degree, has been the false start. Well, you know what, it's real complex. For an offensive player, I mean, it's a really complex system. You get confused sometimes, and you forget the easy stuff, like what is the snap count? Ball backed up now to the seven or eight yard line. That's Matheny back to throw over the middle. That play had no chance. Intended for Melee Rich with Danielle Harvey in coverage. When you throw underneath, you gotta find a hole and the receiver has to settle in that hole. There was basically no hole there. She tried to force it through. Great defensive coverage by Los Angeles. Los Angeles now taking over, trailing this one already 12 to nothing. And yes, there's a lot of football left here, but at some point, there's got to be a little bit of urgency with this offense. Really a big mistake the last time out by Salerno throwing that interception to Williams. She needs to step her game up. Salerno in the pocket. That was intended for Carmen Borso. Salerno struggling. We sat down to talk about her lack of dominance. The way defenses play me, I mean, they're blitzing the house on me. They're sending corners like they would never do at other quarterbacks. They're dropping all the way back into a short field, so they're taking away my long passes and stuff, so I'm finding ways to get around it, and I'm going to have to switch up my strategies a little bit. And that's fine. It's just going to make me an overall better quarterback. I got to disagree a little bit. It comes down to the offensive coordinator, Jeff Loudon. When you're getting blitzed like that, you got to teach your quarterback. You're supposed to be happy when you get blitzed. That's when you make big plays. Right there, she's saying the blitzes are screwing her up. It should be the opposite. They should be scoring big plays off of blitzes. The counter argument to that, as you mentioned in the pregame show, there are really no targets for Ashley Salerno. I mean, you're talking about Cynthia Schmidt being their number one receiver out of this game, at least to this point, and Delaney Hall just not far enough along to be competitive in this league. That's a great point. During their championship years, Salerno had great receivers on both sides. These receivers are good, but they're not great. They are really missing Cynthia Schmidt tonight. The aforementioned Delaney Hall with the reception. A six-yard connection from Salerno. That'll set up a vital fourth and four for this offense. I'm not sure they're going to get another playoff. That should be the end of the first quarter. A quarter that saw Seattle getting up early, 12 to nothing. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to LFL football night, beautiful downtown Chicago, Illinois, site of the Western Conference Championship. The Seattle missed in the Los Angeles temptation, a pretty vital fourth and four here. 
Vital, this is huge right now for Ashley Salerno in Los Angeles. They can't go down three scores to Seattle. This game might be over. They need to answer right now. Ball at the 21 of Los Angeles. Salerno from the shotgun, dropping back, looking down the field, and well overthrown. That was intended for Kiara Patterson with Kiara Williams in coverage. The only way you throw that ball is if your receiver is equal to the defensive back, the cornerback Williams. There was nothing there. It's fourth and four. Just get the first down. There's nothing there for a touchdown. Bad play again by Salerno. Or poor play calling, because you got to go back to the offensive coordinator there. I'm not sure why you're calling a go pattern on a fourth and four when you have options like Carmen Borso underneath, Delaney Hall. I'm not sure why you would look for Kiara Patterson, who's played very little football this year, down the field. 100% right. The only way you throw that, I get you can throw a deep receiver trying to get the coverage out of the way, but she was not even close to getting behind Kiara Williams. Bad play selection, you're right. And look at the field position for Seattle again. They're at the Los Angeles 21-yard line. That looks to be a draw play to the bull, Stevie Schnorr. And look out when she gets ahead of momentum. That'll be good for six yards. Stevie Schnorr is absolutely great to get to the target hole. Watch this. Man-on-man -oh -man blocks, everybody's one-on-one. -on -one. She just reads the hole, looks for daylight, and gets a big gain again. They are destroying Megan Hansen right now. That front line of Los Angeles really struggling against the power game of Stevie Schnorr. A second and four ball at the Los Angeles 15-yard line. Running backs flanking each side of Matheny. They're going to go back to the bull Schnorr on a third down. That was a second and four, actually, setting up a third down. So Seattle not shying away from the run game. Not at all. Again, going right at Megan Hansen. In fact, she had a shot. She was looking eye to eye with Schnorr. But you saw the speed outside. She actually just blew right by Hansen again. You got to wonder how much of that is personal with Megan Hansen and Lily Granston. You said you asked head coach Chris Michelson about that history. We'll see how it unfolds tonight. Again, going right at Hansen and gaining about three yards. That should be a first and goal for this Seattle offense. That was actually a solid play by the defense. They finally stopped her for less than five yards. Yes, she got the first down, though. But that's what they need to do, seal those inside eight gaps and force them to go outside. Seattle more than willing to kind of chip away at this defense. Carries of two, three, and four yards all the way down the field. That was the game plan, do that. And then the short passing game underneath their safeties who play way deep. And then when they come up, and they're going to have to come up, then you go over the top with Randall. That is the difference between a very patient Seattle offense and a very impatient Los Angeles offense. And look at the trickery here. That is the Jade Randall. A good open field tackle by Danielle Harvey, or that was six points. Chris Michelson put in new plays just for this game against Los Angeles. He knew they over pursue, so he did a lot of these reverses, counters, and all that, and it's working to perfection right now. And they're doing just about everything to try to get Jade Randall involved in this offense after they saw the offensive weapon number 18 can be when she was in Dallas last season. Isn't that amazing? That's how much talent they have here in Seattle. She was the league MVP, and that's her first touch of the night. A second and goal. That is Schnorr in motion from the shotgun. Rolling right, throwing to the end zone. And that's Dominique Malloy about the half yard line. They are not going to give her a touchdown, but that'll set up a third and goal inside the one. KK Matheny is the best at extending plays. Nothing there. Scrambles outside, throws it the only place that it can be complete. Low and to the inside. Malloy makes a great catch, great throw by Matheny. How about Malloy getting her hands under that ball and coming up with that reception? That's what you have to do, throw it below the waist. So if it's dropped, it's dropped and not intercepted. Ball at the half yard line. Handoff will go back to Malloy. That was the bull leading the way at the fullback position. Touchdown, Seattle. Wow, this is a nightmare for Los Angeles tonight. Tui Suanoa really thought they were going to win this game. Now they are down three scores early in this game. Unbelievable start for Seattle. Again, I got to go back to the mentality and the offensive scheme of Seattle. They chip away at you and they know they're going to get their points versus Los Angeles. That's just looking for the home run ball 
every time down the field despite not having the weapons. Well, that's it. It all comes down to coaching. Chris Michelson, in my opinion, is the best game planner. You give, her a couple, give him a couple weeks to get ready for a game, he's going to study and study and study and pick you apart. Another two-point attempt here by Seattle, this time a crossing pattern. And that's complete to Jade Randall falling back into the end zone. That'll extend Seattle's lead to a surprising 20 to nothing score. That shows you what kind of athlete KK Matheny is. She was falling backwards. They had a trip set to the right. Randall did a quick out wide open. She just slung it out there. More points for Seattle. Unbelievable throw. There's been a lot of talk about Jade Randall and KK Matheny not having that chemistry. But when you sit down and talk to Randall and Matheny, they're very comfortable with one another. It just hasn't translated to the field yet. That's exactly what head coach Chris Michelson told me. He said in practice, they are on the money. They have great chemistry, but some of their games have been blowouts, so they don't throw the ball as much as they do in tight games. He said, you watch, they will connect. A first and 10, Los Angeles again going to work. That was a misdirection handoff to Takarangi. And Randall with the open field tackle, but not before an eight yard carry. They need more play calls like this. Misdirection, a Y underneath. Takarangi is a beast. She's 5'9", 170. As you can see, very tough to bring down. Takarangi playing in LFL Australia with the New South Wales Surge, now her third season with Los Angeles. See, they have weapons. I get on Jeff Loudon because he doesn't use them as much as he should. That eight-yard run setting up a second and two. That is Salerno rolling right and taking off. Lowering the shoulder against her old nemesis, Michelle Angel. That'll be good enough for a first down Los Angeles. Wow, this is what Ashley Slurno has been looking for all night long. She does not like Michelle Angel. It is a fact. Right there, going head on head. Great tackle by Angel. But Tui Suanoa, the head coach, he told me he wouldn't be surprised on a run like that that she would focus and target Michelle Angel. There was an off the field issue between Salerno and Angel that got Angel out of Los Angeles and signed with Dallas. We'll see how that plays out tonight, if at all. That was intended for Carmen Borso, a poor pass from Salerno. Now a second and 10. Well, we always talk about the chaos in Los Angeles. That's a great point. I mean, Michelle Angel was the backup quarterback for Ashley Salerno, and then they have, end up getting in a fist fight. Well, not only was Angel the backup quarterback here in Los Angeles, she was also an emerging free safety. In fact, at an all-fantasy level, now that is lost for Los Angeles. This is Salerno buying time in the pocket, evading defenders, and just crashing into Michelle Angel. That'll be a gain of four yards, setting up a third and six for this offense. Fucking squeeze! Thunder and deer! God damn it! Chris Michelson urging his defense to collapse on Salerno as we're at a media timeout. Seattle up 20 to nothing. They don't just sit there and watch. Squeeze her. If you get high enough, when you squeeze down, you're closing the gate behind her. She ain't gonna go outside no more. She's gotta go in. But you have got to fucking squeeze. She's gonna single-handedly run back in this fucking game because we're fucking too weak up front. You better get better up front right now. Welcome back to LFL football night. A Tony Robbins type addition from our good friend Chris Michelson getting after that defense. Wow, just think if they were losing, they're up 20 to nothing. But he's right. Defensive coordinator David Price, they know that Ashley Salerno, when they fall behind, tries to do too much and put the whole game on her shoulders. They want the defensive ends, Wheeling and Hawkins, to squeeze her so she can't run. Right there, they let her out. She got a big gainer. This is the best looking drive for this Los Angeles offense. A third and six ball at the Seattle 18 yard line. Salerno from the shotgun, looking to the end zone to Delaney Hall. And just beyond the outstretched arms of Hall, I'm not sure if Jeff Loudon, the offensive coordinator, has seen something on film that thinks his receivers can get behind the secondary. Well, it's one-on-one -on -one coverage against Jessica Hopkins, and you don't throw a deep ball unless your receiver is equal to or behind a defensive back, and she was not even close, and she threw it. She should come off to the secondary receiver. Coach Michelson said it when he was scouting Salerno, he said that's one of her problems. She'll stay on the intended receiver, and if she's not open, you're to throw a pass like that or run and never come to the second or third receiver. Great job that time by Jessica Hopkins. Reading the eyes of Ashley Salerno, a fourth and six. 
And Salerno connecting with Takarangi, by far the unsung hero of this offense. Chris Michelson is not going to be happy with this. He scouted this play. It's a release play by the left tight end. They run right, and then it's a slow release outside. He had that scouted. His defense just simply did not cover Takarangi. Good throw by Salerno. Both Takarangi and the right tight end, Sherry Awaga, great receiving options for Salerno. But they're going to keep it on the ground with Borso. A nice looking four yard carry. You can see that LA's offense has a rhythm right now. They can sense they have to score. This is a must score drive. Holding number 15 on the offense, 10 yard penalty, still first down. You talked about rhythm and momentum. What better breaker of that is a holding call? That time on Sherry Awaga. That'll back up this Los Angeles offense. An unneeded hold. That was not even near the play. It was there anyway, and now they're coming backwards. You're right, that is a momentum killer right there. And I don't like the overall body language by Sherry Awaga. She hasn't played much this year and just doesn't seem to be in this game. You're 100% right. You would think in a conference championship game, everybody would be on their A game. Right now, there's no, no fire. This is a design keeper by Salerno. And Salerno making her way down to about the seven yard line. A gain of 10 yards and setting up a second and goal. Ashley Salerno taking the game into her own hands. There was no read on that. That was a straight quarterback sweep. Great stock blocking down field by the receivers outside. They're moving the football. We are at the two minute warning with Los Angeles threatening. Back to LFL football night. The final two minutes of the first half with Los Angeles in its best field position of the night on a second and goal. A must score situation, Salerno doing everything. Salerno deciding to keep it herself and a big time collision down at the goal line. That looked to be Jade Randall. Good looking hit. Two solid players going head to head. This is what happens when a rock hits a hard place. Watch Salerno again, just a quarterback sweep. Randall comes up. Oh, that is LFL football at its best. And they're both competitors. Neither will give up an inch, especially down at the goal line. We've certainly seen Ashley Salerno go viral down there. Getting a little bit older and easing it up. Now a third and goal, ball at the one, handoff, Borso, and that is the first score of the night for Los Angeles, going back to what got him here, the F-150. Peanut butter jelly time. L.A. is back in the game, exactly what they needed. Great seal block on the outside by Takarangi, and Borso got in there, the points that they needed badly. The passing game just not able to get it done and you thought it was just a matter of time before they went back to Borso. They have to, that's what got them here right now. It's Carmen Borso and Ashley Salerno running the football. Passing, there's zero passing going on tonight. This will be a two point attempt for Los Angeles, down 14 points and looking to dump it in the end zone. A poor looking pass to Megan Hansen. So our score will remain 20 to six, but Los Angeles making this a two score game. On that two-point conversion, Chris Michelson's got to be thrilled. The defensive ends, Whelan and Hawkins, they squeezed Salerno. She didn't know what to do when she threw a duck out there. Great defensive play. Seattle will get an opportunity here. They have both timeouts remaining, and certainly they can get it down the field with the likes of Jade Randall and Dominique Malloy. They have a quick strike offense, absolutely. They haven't needed it all night because of the way they're just nitpicking, bam, 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 down the field. But you're right, to score quickly, they have the talent. Did you see the play call there by KK Matheny? That looked like it went on forever. And this is a very complex offense, as we've noted all season. A first and 10 handoff, that's Dominique Malloy gaining only three yards as the clock continues to run. This is obviously a shortened field with two timeouts, so plenty of time for Seattle. We haven't talked about Lily Grant so much. She's a difference maker on defense right there, coming up on the speedster Malloy and bringing her down for a short game. Second and seven now, about minute five remaining. That's Matheny rolling right and connecting with Stevie Schnorr. 
Lily Granston coming in to finish her off. Chelsea Hart on the tackle. That'll set up a third down for Seattle. KK Matheny has fast eyes. You gotta love the way she looked deep, then quickly came off and went to her secondary receiver. Block low the weights, number three, Seattle. Ten yard penalty, still second down. That is a big penalty on Dominique Malloy being called for a chop block. That'll set him back to a second and 17 at the Seattle 10 yard line. Big mistake by Malloy. Coach Michelson, he wants more points. He knows as long as Ashley Salerno's a quarterback for LA, they can score at any time and come back from any big number, two touchdowns or three touchdowns. Second and 17, ball backed up to the Seattle 10 yard line. That is Hopkins in motion. Toss left, Stevie Schnorr. And could Seattle just be running out the clock here with a 20 to six lead? You're right. With the weapons they have outside, with Randall and Jessica Hopkins, you would think they'd be throwing the ball down the field right there. That looked we like they're running the clock out. Los Angeles, that is their second and final timeout. Los Angeles electing to call its final timeout. We'll see if Seattle has a change of mind here with time on the clock. Let's listen in. Come on, just get back. Get back. We'll get water in a second. Fucking hey. You have got to stop taking so goddamn long in the huddle. You're killing me. You didn't fucking crack her. She never cracked. I know because you're taking too fucking long. Stop taking so fucking long. What is going on in the huddle? Does somebody not know the fucking plays? You've got to say black five. Let's go. And shut the fuck up. Unless I give you another destruction. You guys are killing me in that fucking huddle. That's always been a big problem for Seattle all year long. KK Matheny, as good as she is, she takes a long time calling the play and at the line of scrimmage. You can't do your reads unless you get to the line of scrimmage and make the play selection at the line. So explain this to me. You played football at the highest level. If that's an issue, is that that big of an issue to try to get worked out? It shouldn't be. For a team like this and a veteran quarterback, it should be easy to correct. This is a dump off to Jessica Hopkins in the open field. Good tackle by Lily Cranston, but a 15-yard connection from Matheny. What an unbelievable throw by KK Matheny. She got that over the 5'9", Takarangi, somehow, and it went under Megan Hansen. Perfect velvet pass. First down for Seattle. Personal foul. Roughing the pass for number four. 10-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. So tack on the yardage. That is Kia Ramos being called for unnecessary roughness on KK Matheny. Wow, talk about a momentum changer. A play ago, Tui Suanoa for LA is calling a timeout so they can get the ball back and try to score points before halftime. And now Seattle, who was playing conservative, they have the ball deep in LA's territory now. Like you said, they had the ball at their own 10 yard line two plays ago. Now set up inside Los Angeles' 17 with plenty of time remaining. That was a crossing pattern, intercepted. Lily Granston having an all-fantasy type season and coming up big thus far against her former team. Jessica Hopkins, I don't know what she's doing. The ball's there, she just didn't go after it. That was to Hopkins on a quick post and it went right to Lily Granston. She gotta put the, at least put your hands up and knock the ball down. Holy fucking shit, that was a touchdown. Step your fucking game up! Chris Michelson agreeing with your sentiment and disappointed with Hopkins' effort there. This is a first and ten. Salerno down the field and just underthrown. Delaney Hall had gotten behind the Seattle secondary. Wow, I said earlier, Hall didn't have the speed to get behind the secondary. Guess what? She was wide open. Ashley Salerno could not get her the ball. That should have been six for L.A. A second and 10 now, 16 seconds remaining. Los Angeles has no timeouts. So you got to figure everyone is going to be down the field testing that secondary. That was huge. All Salerno had to do was lay it out there for Hall. She was wide open. That would have cut it to a one score game going into halftime. A second and 10, a dribbler back to Salerno looking down the field again. The receiver this time, Kiara Patterson, had gotten behind the defense and this time overthrown. That's all chemistry and timing. That's two in a row. They should have scored points. Salerno could not get either receiver the ball and both of them got behind the coverage. 
The first one to Delaney Hall underthrown. This one overthrown. We talked about it. Salerno just not in sync from a passing standpoint in 2017. A third and 10 ball remains at the 12. Winding down, looking down the field and connecting. That is Delaney Hall. But time will run out on the offense. And that'll be our final play of the second quarter. Too little, too late. They have no timeouts remaining. Great catch by Delaney Hall, but nowhere to go with no time. Great job by Salerno. Buying time, waiting for Hall to get open. She does across the middle, but what kills them, they have no more timeouts left. Delaney Hall in the open field. As you said, time running out, but we do have a penalty. Pass interference on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, one on time down. No, no, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! I Explain something to me. They caught the ball. They either accept it, they either accept the penalty and it's a 10 yard back there, or they decline it and it's a catch. They don't get a fucking additional yards. That does not work. It's a pass interference. They either get the ball or they take the pass interference. Okay, let me go talk to the other ref. No, that is exactly what it is. Sure. This, okay, let me know. If I'm, if I'm wrong, I'll let okay, you know. Let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Okay, okay. One of the more cordial meetings that Chris Michelson will have. Chris Michelson is 100% right. That's either reception and the ball's right there or you take the penalty. One on time down from the 25 yard line, first and 10. So Los Angeles will get another shot at the end zone. That's pretty big when you consider they have no timeouts and this is still a two score game. You know, you talked about Seattle maybe running the clock out. Maybe they should have because LA is getting a lot of shots here to score some points. Ball at midfield, obviously Salerno has plenty of arm to get this in the end zone. The strongest arm in the LFL. Salerno dropping back to pass now, buying time with her legs. Dumping off to Carmen Borso in the flat. A good looking tackle by Jade Randall. And that'll do it for us for the first half of play. Los Angeles trying to mount a rally late but trail this one 20 to six. Back with halftime festivities after this. Defense, you DNs, once you get in, you'll stop. You've got to fucking squeeze her. You guys are getting out there and you're just sitting there like you did your job, your job ain't over. It ain't over until that fucking quarterback is buried in the ground. So if you can't do it, I will find fuckers that will. You wanna talk about it? Now let's be about it. You sit there and talk about what you can do. But I'm watching the fucking quarterback gut us when you're five fucking feet away because you're just sitting on your ass, think your job is over. Corners, you're sitting back on your fucking ass five or six yards back when you roll. You're not a corner, you're a fucking rover on that roll. So you've got to squeeze behind the tight, the DN as she goes in on the edge and you pick up the fucking tight end. Make your life easier. And if they run it, guess what? Now you have to tackle. Boo hoo, you got a fucking couple jobs. And then what are you gonna do on offense? You're gonna run a route and not look for the goddamn ball! It's right in front of you! Everybody. Expect the fucking ball on offense every fucking play! A frustrated Chris Michelson inside the Seattle Mist locker room as we welcome you back to LFL Football Night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. Now, Bobby, when you look at the numbers in the first half of play, you would think this was a much closer game, but Seattle's up two scores. What explains that? Well, I don't understand the play calling by LA's offensive coordinator, Jeff Loudon. For some reason, he's trying to take deep shots down the field instead of doing what got him there. And that's giving the ball to Carmen Borso. Let her pound it out and that, let Salerno go underneath picking them apart. He's not doing that. He's trying deep balls, and I just don't know why. And that's with Cynthia Schmidt being out of the lineup, so you would think they would go to Carmen Borso far more often. Now, counter to Los Angeles' offense, Seattle's offense has had a lot of success up and down the field with multiple five-play scoring drives. Now, I ask you, is that success attributed to the offensive mastermind, Chris Michelson, or is this offense peaking at just the right time? 
A little of both. Michelson does run the most complex offense in the league. Right now, they've got 59 yards on the ground. It's a balanced offense. A lot of that coming from Stevie the Bull Schnorr. The passing game with KK Matheny, not that great, but she has shown that she can beat you. Now, we talked about this being a high-scoring game, but that's only been the case for Seattle thus far, posting 20 first-half points. Let's look at the scoring. Early on in the first quarter, it was a pair of four-yard touchdowns. First, K.K. Matheny connecting with the tight end Shane Norton to give Seattle an early lead. Then it was the Offensive Player of the Year nominee and League MVP nominee, the Bull, Stevie Schnorr, taking it in from four yards out. That gave Seattle a 12 to nothing lead. In the second quarter, Dominique Malloy capped a five-play, 21-yard drive with Seattle breaking the game open 20 to six Right before the half, Los Angeles did manage an answer on the wheels of the F-150 Carmen Borso with a one-yard touchdown run. That brings us to our halftime score of 20 to six as we look at the halftime stats. If you look at these stats, you would think the score was 14 to 13. Seattle has a two-score lead because Los Angeles is not taking advantage of its opportunities and the offensive play calling from LA has been a little suspect. Will Los Angeles mount a rally? Or will Seattle head to its third straight Legends Cup? The second half kickoff is next. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to LFL football night as we look at our two starting quarterbacks. K.K. Matheny, a solid first half, five out of six, one touchdown, one pick. But that pick should have been a reception. She should have been six out of six. Ashley Salerno, only four out of 11, one interception. And she should have had at least one touchdown pass, but she missed the receiver twice. This is Kiara Williams of Seattle getting us underway with the final 20 minutes of football for one of these two teams in the 2017 season. That kick will sail out of bounds, and Los Angeles taking over first and 10 from the 15. You talked about this offense being in disarray at halftime. What really has to happen here in the third and fourth quarter for Los Angeles? Well, Salerno's got to get her game tight. Bottom line, it's up to her. She had open receivers there at the end of the first half. She just totally missed them. You can't do that in a conference championship game. And she's got to stay in the pocket like she did that last play. Don't look to run all the time, and they got a shot. Yeah, this is only a two-score game. There is no reason to get out of your game plan and your scheme. Plenty of time remaining. We'll see if LA elects to keep it on the ground. They do with Nanachka Cloud. And that is the former temptation safety, Michelle Angel, coming up on the tackle. They bring the jet motion. They give it to Claude inside, but a great defensive play. You got to wonder why they don't keep going to Borso. That's what got you there, and they give the ball to Claude. A loss of two yards on that previous carry. And Salerno again going down the field. Just not on the same page with Kiara Patterson or Ninochka Cloud. That was intended for Claude. Wow, you got to wonder again, the offensive coordinator, Jeff Loudon. Two plays in a row, not much there. They're trying to go deep over Williams. There's nothing there. Now it's third down. Give the ball to Borso. Where's that at? There is Jeff Loudon, the offensive coordinator. He's got to show more patience in his play calling. You have the league's number one back, getting back to your point, and yet you're taking shots down the field every play. And now just simple disorganization here on the offensive side. This will back him up. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 15 offense, five yard penalty, third down. That is Sherry Awaga again. I don't know what's happening with Awaga, but she's just mentally checked out of this game. You're right, she's not into the game, but getting back to Jeff Loudon, you get the ball in the second half, you had a little momentum there at the end of the first half, and two plays, you give it to Claude, and then you try to bomb, there's, there's no continuity in his calls. Now a third and 17 after that Awaga false start. Ball at the Los Angeles seven yard line. This is Salerno in the pocket. Now rolling out, throwing down the field, and connecting. That is Carmen Borso. So if they're not going to hand it off to her, why not take a shot down the field? 
This is what you call a competition catch. She is not open, one-on-one -on -one against Michelle Angel. Who wants the ball more? Borso brought it down. A great Antonio Gates type box out by Borso. And that was a 30 yard completion. Salerno calling her own number and colliding with Randall. Those two met in the first half and get reacquainted there at the goal line. And once again, we've got them both mic'd up. Listen into this. Wow. Wow is right. Is Ashley Salerno a quarterback or a fullback? That was an incredible run. Wow is right. A first and goal ball at the two, a high snap. And Salerno getting blown up. So the favor returned by Jade Randall nearly causing a Los Angeles fumble. We say it all year long, bad snaps, you lose football games. That's twice tonight, Megan Hansen. And it all comes down to technique. You have a high butt, it's going to be a high snap. You got to keep your butt down, and the ball will never go high over a quarterback's head. Ball backed up to the five-yard line. Hansen has really struggled with getting snaps back to Salerno. Another low dribbler. This time Salerno scrambling right now left, looking to the end zone. And connecting, that is Kiera Patterson. Touchdown, Los Angeles. That is why Ashley Salerno is a nominee for the Hall of Fame this year. There was nothing there. Again, a terrible snap from Megan Hansen. She rolled it back there. There's nothing there, and she makes something out of nothing. Great play by Salerno. Both Kiara Patterson and Tiana Takarangi both were in the back of the end zone, and that was a simple jump ball. Patterson showing that athleticism and making this an eight-point game. This will be a one-point attempt, and Borso not even touched. And just like that, it is a one-score game. Los Angeles crawling back 13 to 20. Who would have called this? The way LA was playing in the first half, they are back in this. You got to credit Salerno and this offense. They are keeping their head in the game. They're only one score down. The pressure now going back to KK Matheny, the seven-year veteran of first and 10. Ball at the Seattle 15-yard line. Seattle having a lot of success on the ground, although this time an empty back set. Faking the reverse, going down the field. Connecting, that is Jade Randall. Touchdown, Seattle. We have been waiting for that all night long, and it's set up, set up, set up, run, sweep, jet sweep. They all come up, Lily Granton came up, they fake the jet sweep to Dominic Malloy, and Randall goes deep. Great call by Michaels and great throw by K.K. Matheny. And look at the athletic ability of Randall. Outruns the entire secondary, Megan Hansen. And just like that, what an answer by Seattle. The kind of game film that Randall has out there, I have no idea how you let her get behind you. You could see Lily Granston looked appeared to be lost in coverage there. That's what I talk about, continuity in an offensive coordinator. Remember early in the game that jet sweep? Lily Granson came up only a two-yard game. Well, guess what? They faked that play. Granson came up, and Randall goes behind her. Great call and a great throw by KK. This will be a two-point attempt by Seattle. Dominique Malloy, I'm not sure she got in. They're going to give it to her. So just like that, one play later, Seattle connecting on a 35-yard touchdown from Matheny to Randall. And with Malloy's conversion, this lead is back out to 28 to 13. You can see the look on that defense of LA. They are in shock right now. Just when you think they're back in the game, one play, they go to league MVP of last year, Jade Randall, and boom, Seattle back in charge. A first and 10 ball at the Los Angeles 15. And if ever you need an answer, it's right here. The way Seattle's offense is playing, Los Angeles has got to keep pace. This is a throwback to Kiara Patterson, and now a double pass to Salerno. An eight-yard completion, but that ball hung a bit. It hung a lot. I like the play call, but you got to sell it like it's going to be a just a regular quick screen, like you're going to run it. She caught it, and everybody knew she was going to throw it. And then she waited too long. Salerno was open. You throw it quick, it would have been a big gainer. 
Patterson, a really a strong athlete for them, but again, a lot of off the field issues, missing practices. So she's been limited with playing time this year. It's a lot of acting in that play, and she has a strong arm, but she didn't show it right there. A second and two handoff. They're going to go back to Takarangi. And quietly, Takarangi is having a great game. That'll be good enough for a Los Angeles first down. They're getting positive yards with Takarangi, of course, with Borso. Develop plays off of that. Then you have play action passes off of that. The continuity is just not there. They need to go back to what got in there, Borso, and then give it to Takarangi. That looked good. A first and 10 ball at the Seattle 19 yard line. A nice control drive here by L.A. And they're going to listen to Bobby Huco. That is Carmen Borso. A gain of eight yards right up the middle. Running between the tackles, Borso is filthy. She is a filthy runner. One cut, boom, one cut around somebody. And she always gets eight to ten yards on plays like that. And Los Angeles has a pretty good dominant up front line with Takarangi Hansen and Sherry Awaga. They've got to use that size against Seattle's interior defense. Just like they just did. Allow Borso to go one-on-one -on -one against anybody. She's going to get by him. A second and two. That'll be a loss of a yard. Kiara Williams on the tackle. This looks like the L.A. team that we saw all year long. They pound it down the field, and then when needed, you let Salerno throw it. But just think, if she would have completed one of those passes right before the first half, this game would be tied up if they go in here. That is a toss left to Carmen Borso. That should be good enough for a Los Angeles first and goal. We mentioned that offensive line of Los Angeles. We haven't mentioned them enough. Takarangi, Awaga, and Megan Hansen are blowing out Seattle right now. I don't want to play Monday morning quarterback, especially this early in the game. But what if Los Angeles had this scheme in the first quarter, being patient with the run game? I think they would have managed a few more points. Especially with Cynthia Schmidt out of the game, their top target at wide receiver. A first and goal from the four, a high snap to Salerno. And reaching across the goal line, they're going to mark her down at about the one yard line. This is the windshield washer game we expected with two powerful offenses. Seattle scores, Salerno and L.A. come right back. It's the third time Salerno goes at Michelle Angel, her nemesis. And again, I think she won that battle and almost got in the end zone. I'm not sure that Salerno didn't get in there. It looked like she landed on Angel and maybe extended the ball over the goal line. You were right. If I'm Tui Suanoa, you have to challenge that because she leaned back on her back, but she was on top of Angel. That might have been a touchdown. A second and goal. That was a great-looking tackle by Randall and cleaned up by Melee Rich. Even though quarterback Ashley Salerno was a powerful runner, you got to wonder, inside the five, you have the number one back in the league in your backfield, Carmen Borso. Wouldn't you give her the football? Seattle knows a thing about that. Check back at the Super Bowl with Marshawn Lynch. This is territory that you've got to feed your power back. And again, an empty back set. Salerno dancing through the defense and losing the ball. It is getting too fancy with this offense. What a play off the edge. Jade Randall forced Salerno to cut it inside. And then Whelan gets rid of the football. Great defensive play by Seattle. A great punch out there by Katie Whelan. Los Angeles very fortunate to get on the ball. This is a score they need. I hate to pound this point, but where is Carmen Borso? A fourth and goal ball at the Seattle two-yard line. Receivers flank to the left side. And the handoff will go to Borso. Look at the tackle by Jade Randall. Randall fighting off the block of Ninechka Cloud and making a goal line stand. That's the way to fucking play. Hey, that's the way. Good job, guys. How you feeling, Danielle? How you feeling? Okay, I'm gonna need you on this. I need you to block your fucking ass off and let's get this fucking score right here. Offense, come here, offense. Listen, you go down and shove it down their fucking throat. They're tired, they're fucking, they're soft. They're tired right now. Shove it down their fucking throat. Hold on to the ball. No fucking interceptions, no fumbles. Hold on to the ball. Blocks, stay on your blocks and drive them into the fucking ground. I want you to bury temptations on this field when we score. Because they're buried if we score right here. Why 
We've got to score. Coach Michelson is correct. If they score on this drive, that's three scores. That might be enough to win this game. He's put it all on his offensive line and his running backs, Stevie Schnorr and Dominic Malloy. Look for them to carry this all the way down the field. Yeah, at this point, no need to go to the air game, especially with backs like Dominique Malloy and Stevie Schnorr. And they're going to keep it on the ground. That is Dominique Malloy getting the edge and colliding with Lily Granston. A seven-yard carry for Malloy. Malloy delivering the blow right there to Granson, but you see how far down the field that was? Granson now is on an island. She doesn't know whether to come up and get Malloy or stay back because if, if she goes up, they'll go over the top again. This has been a well-balanced offense all night and very convertible down in distances here. Now a second and three. Matheny back to pass, quick dump off. Stevie Schnorr, very safe underneath. And that'll be good enough for a Seattle first down. Great call by Michelson, great throw by KK Matheny, like you said. Just keep it short. They can't intercept that. It's very effective. Keep the clock running and you're moving the ball. It is a very safe dink and dunk offense. Certainly has the capability to go over the top. But I love, again, the patience of the play calling here by Chris Michelson especially when you're up two scores here. He came in with a game plan, he stuck with it, and it's working. First and 10, ball at the 16 of Seattle. Over the middle, that one kind of dangerous. Megan Hansen not able to get a hand on it. They're gonna call that a completion. I thought that hit the ground. How can they call this a completion? Why aren't they challenging this? Watch as it clearly hits the ground. That's not even close. That is a good look at that incompletion, surprisingly. Los Angeles sideline not electing to challenge that. And this should bring us to the end of the third quarter. Seattle comfortably ahead 28 to 13. Seattle an opportunity to put this game away, leading it 28 to 13. Somehow Megan Hansen and that LA defense, they have to come up with a stop or a turnover now. Toss right, that is Stevie Schnorr. She'll be limited to a yard. Great pursuit there by Chelsea Hart and Kia Ramos. This is how you want your cornerback to play. Chelsea Hart does it perfectly. Sheds it off the defender and goes head to head with the bull. And she's a beast on defense going against a beast on offense. Getting back to an earlier point I made, we talked about how well balanced this offense is and how the play calling seems to be very patient, taking what the defense will give you. Another thing they do, they create these very manageable third and fourth downs. Looking at a third and three here. And they have so many options. They can run it to Schnorr outside. They can give it to Dominic Malloy or just throw a short pass. This looks like L.A. may have jumped. Regardless, Stevie Schnorr will gain eight yards. This will probably be declined, and it'll be a first down Seattle. In a short yardage situation, that's what you have to do. The rules of the game, the defense have to play off three yards off the line of scrimmage. When you have the bull at fullback, there is no way she's being stopped. Encroachment on a defense number four. That penalty is declined, result in the play, first down. That is the second key penalty on Kia Ramos. We talked about Ramos just being signed this past week. She looks very undisciplined out there. Well, that's the problem. When you bring a free agent this late in the season, yeah, she's a great player, but she doesn't know the Los Angeles system, so she's going to be lost out there for a little while. That'll set up a first and 10. Seattle really working on this clock. We are under nine minutes. That is Jade Randall in motion at the top of your screen. Toss left, Stevie Schnorr leading the blocks is Jade Randall. A nine-yard carry by Schnorr, and I got a feeling they're going to ride the bull 
right into the Legends Cup if this keeps up. Great play. Again, they're using Megan Hansen and her pursuit, which hurts her against Seattle. She went right, thinking the ball was going to go right to Malloy. They pitch it left, so she's way out of position, and there's no way she's going to tackle Storm. A second and one ball down to the Los Angeles 10 yard line. And you got to figure here, the way the Seattle offense is playing, if this Los Angeles defense does not get a stop here and Seattle scores, this game is pretty much done. Pretty much done, even though they have Salerno at quarterback who can strike quick. You're right, if they score here, it might be over. A high tackle there by Megan Hansen. That'll be a gain of three yards by the Bull, setting up a first and goal. Good job. Guys, let's go. We're in the red zone. Smell the end zone, Bull. Smell the end zone, Bull. You got to love KK Matheny getting her team in the game, getting the Bull to smell the end zone. I love her as a quarterback. Great leader. Another difference between the play calling with Los Angeles and Seattle, they know their stud. And that is number two, Stevie Schnorr. They're not going to go away from her down here in the goal line. Look at the game plan. They use their weapons. Schnorr, Malloy, and Randall. They're using them all. A first and goal dropping back. Little screen to Stevie Schnorr. And that was three defenders keying on Stevie Schnorr. That'll be a loss of a yard. They had Jade Randall breaking open on a post pattern, but I believe that was designed to go to Schnorr, give her the ball in space, and let her do her thing. This Los Angeles defense has played well at times. And make no mistake about it, they have the season on the line here. You can see Megan Hansen encouraging this defense. Hansen coming in from Mo Gaxiola, who retired earlier this year and performing really well as the league's leading tackler. This is a little shovel pass, nearly intercepted. That was an ill-advised shovel pass from K.K. Matheny. Kia Ramos nearly coming up with the interception. Again, another play off the fake jet sweep. They bring Malloy in motion. They think it's going to be the same play they ran all night, and then a quick shovel pass, but nothing there. Good defensive play by L.A. A third and goal as the clock continues to run here. If you're not familiar with LFL timing rules, it is a continuous clock. It does not stop until we get to the two minute mark of the fourth and second quarter. Los Angeles does have a timeout remaining. This is a huge play for this defense. They need to come up with something and get the ball back. Matheny back to pass, edge rush, Kiana Takarangi. Takarangi getting home just when they needed it. A sack on KK Matheny. Wow, you want your defensive end to run the horn off the edge. She blew by Jay Norton. What a play. God damn it. Fucking A. Chris Michelson knew he could put the game away here. They still have another shot at the end zone, a fourth and goal. But the ball now backed up to the 16-yard line. Well, that's it. You don't want to go backwards. Now they have to throw the football. You have options if this is not a sack on the last play. K.K. Matheny will go to the end zone. All three receivers flank to the right side. Matheny directing traffic now to the end zone. And that'll be intercepted by her former teammate, Megan Hansen. Megan Hansen reacting to the ball. Incredibly great play. But K.K. Matheny, she is taught on fourth down and long like this. If nothing's there, throw the ball up and give Randall a chance. At worst, it'll be picked off like it was, but it's, it's better than being sacked. She throws it up, Randall's out there, but great play by Hanson jumping on the ball. You got the weakest fucking cover girl in the fucking it, 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 out there. She's playing safety. She doesn't want to get beat deep. Stevie's wide open in the break. Wide open. <laughs> No! You want time for that on goal line? They're one, one yard off. Los Angeles going back to work here, still in this game, with 4.48 remaining in the fourth quarter. This is Salerno evading the rush, throwing down the field into triple coverage that time, intended for Kiara Patterson. 
It looked like a spread option play. Obviously, she played off that play action and tried to pass. Again, I don't get it. They never showed that before, so nobody went up for it, and the coverage was all over the receiver. Because of the LFL's shortened field, you could hypothetically still keep it on the ground here with Carmen Borceau, considering it's only a two-score game, and then elect an onside kick here. Absolutely, and you got a quarterback with a gun, probably the best gun ever in the league. You give it to Borceau, then you let her throw it. Ashley Salerno calling her own number and gaining four yards as we are officially under four minutes now. Los Angeles electing to call a timeout. That is what we'll do. We'll take a break here as Los Angeles' defense gives this team revived hope. Back to LFL football night in the Western Conference Championship as the Los Angeles Temptation trailed this 28-13. Now trying to mount a rally on a third and six. Salerno, quick screen. That is Delaney Hall. And Hall breaking through the defense. That'll be an eight-yard reception. Without Schmidt in the lineup, Delaney Hall has become the go-to receiver. Just a tunnel screen, good blocking in front of her. And she was a bull getting through there to get the first down. A first and 10 play. That is an inside handoff to Sherry Awaga. Awaga not doing much of anything tonight, with the exception of a couple penalties in the first half. Just her whole body language seems off. You can see, she doesn't seem like she wants to be here. She got no fire in her. I don't know why they gave her the football. That play has worked during the season, that Y under, but tonight, nothing there, and she has no fire in her right now. A second and seven for this offense. Salerno back in the shotgun, throwing into the end zone. And I'm not sure who that was intended for. Both Kiana Takarangi and Delaney Hall were in the same spot. I think she's trying to go to Hall on a streak route, the nine route down the sideline, but it's a bad pass inside. Williams almost picks it off. I'm not sure if Salerno was going to Takarangi coming across. Just a bad pass. A third and seven. This may be a good opportunity for this offense to look for something underneath the Hall or Borso. Salerno back to drop again, going to the end zone. And that went through the arms of Takarangi. I say it all the time, big players make big plays in big games. Takarangi has to make this catch in the conference championship game. That was a gift, the easiest catch ever. You guys are garbage, come on! Mike down! Fuck! Chris Michelson not giving a vote of confidence to his secondary after they allowed Kiana Takarangi to get behind him. And Takarangi dropping a sure touchdown. This is a fourth and seven. And look at the break on the ball by Jade Randall. That'll turn it over on downs and bring us to our two minute warning. A big stop by Seattle. Back to LFL football night and next week, it's the Eastern Conference Championship with the Atlanta Steam and the Chicago Bliss once again tangoing. Again, one of the great matchups, but Chicago has their number. Atlanta has never beaten them. Jade Randall with impressive defensive numbers, and she is your game MVP on the night. Great defensive numbers and a great catch for a touchdown. As always, she shows up on big games. Only two minutes remain as Seattle could very well be headed to its third straight Legends Cup. Why are you, why are you so anxious? Here we go. And that is called having command of your huddle. You could see KK Matheny telling everybody to settle down here. We still have two minutes of football remaining. A first and 10 ball at the 19. That's a handoff to Schnorr. And Kia Ramos trying to rip the ball out of there. That'll set up a second and nine. We're going to see a lot of that 22 dive. Seattle practices this all the time. Just move the ball down the field, run the clock out. They know how to run the clock out better than any team in the LFL. They certainly have the weapons to do that with Stevie Schnorr, and you can see there Dominique Malloy and a pretty impressive front line with Nicole Peterson, Shay Norton, and Danielle Hawkins. 
Seattle has a chip on their shoulder. Coach Michelson told me they expected to win the championship game, the Legends Cup last year against Chicago. Obviously, they did not. They won it this year. A second and nine handoff. That is Stevie Schnorr. Seattle very content at just running out the clock. As we approach the one minute mark, we do have a timeout on the field with Los Angeles. That is their final timeout. So now Seattle will just simply have to run out the clock. All they have to do is take the snap, take a knee, give it to Schnorr, but just don't fumble the football. Ashley Salerno very disappointed. She hasn't had a championship since 2012, but she has a lot more time in his career. Yeah, she's up for the Hall of Fame this year, but she had more years to play LFL football. A third and six handoff to Dominique Malloy. Malloy did get out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. A minute three remaining. It'll set up a fourth and two. And I know I may be stretching here, but if Los Angeles gets a stop here and a quick score, they still have an opportunity, an onside kick, and another score to tie this game up. You're right, but when you have Stevie Schnorr, this is almost automatic two yards. And there it is, a first down for Seattle. And all they'll have to do now is run out the clock. You mentioned it, Stevie Schnorr got him to this point. Three formation, do not let them touch me. Do not let them touch me. Victory formation. I love that fire of number 15, realizing the Legends Cup is a mere 30 seconds away and allowing everybody to kind of soak in the moment. That is the best feeling in football when your quarterback says victory formation. Under 20 seconds remaining, and that'll be the knee that sends the Seattle Mist to the third straight Legends Cup. I have to say, the team that came in prepared won this football game. The game plan that Michelson and Price put together was flawless. Great effort by Seattle. And there are the championship hats. You see the look of despair on Chelsea Hart. Another tough season for Los Angeles and for Seattle. Now they simply await the winner of the Eastern Conference Championship next week but they know they are headed back to Los shake Angeles. It, shake it, guys. Shake it. What's the next down? Make it out, guys. How's it feel? How's it feel? How's it feel? We gonna finish it. We gonna finish it. You really have to feel for Jade Randall, Danielle Hawkins, Nicole Peterson, and Michelle Angel going to their first Legends Cup. That'll do it for us here for the Western Conference Championship. It's the Seattle Mist headed to their third straight Legends Cup for Bobby Huco. This is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week from the Eastern Conference Championship.